Welcome to this thrilling 3D printing venture. Today I'll be your guide as we embark on this journey to assemble an incredible device. Assuming you already 3D printed all the necessary parts, we have one last crucial component left, the commutator. Please keep in mind that this project is intended for individuals over the age of 14. By constructing this device, you assume full responsibility for your actions. I understand preparing all the files can be a time-consuming process. From programming and testing the printed parts, to crafting examples and debugging the design. I promise that the files will be available in my next video release. Thank you for joining me on this endeavor, now let's go! First, you need to make a commutator. You will need some tools and a ball bearing, M2 nut and two copper washers. Now start your print and wait for the printer to pause at certain layer. Insert the M2 nut and resume the print. After another pause, insert the ball bearing. Next, insert the first washer by heating it with a lighter and pressing it down with tweezers. Go for the last stop. Ensure that you press the washer in such a way that its stop is flush with the top of the stopped print. Lastly, heat the second washer and do the same as for the first one. You can heat it after the washer is installed and adjust it again. Do not worry, you can adjust the copper washers with a soldering iron if they are not concentric. All done now! Heat the scalpel and press it to the print. Make sure it's flat. After it cools, remove the scalpel. Make sure those two small holes are passable. One should go through the print. Insert the first wire. Solder it. Black is next. Clean the solder blobs with pliers. Now sand that spot down. Do the same for the other one. Now you need to assemble the motor casing with the commutator you just made. Find a small 5 volt DC motor and disassemble it. Heat those iron leaves up to free them from the plastic casing. And sorry, I forgot to turn off the lights. Also, desolder those old wires from iron leaves. Prepare two lead casings that you printed. Now use the soldering iron to heat the iron leaves and insert them into the print. Do the same for the other one.
And don't worry, you can always adjust them later with the soldering iron. To mount the commutator, use the super glue. Only a single drop of glue is required, spread it evenly by smearing. Press the commutator, but do not go all the way. Make some room to clean it with a piece of paper. Leave it to dry for an hour or two. Prepare these parts for the next step. Now before you start, bend those iron leaves outwards. Just a tip and just a bit. Do the same for the other one. Install one of them with the motor to see if everything fits and aligns. Next, prepare the infrared LED. Cut it like this and insert it upwards. Yellow on the top means it's an LED emitter, not receiver. Next, solder a 330 ohm resistor. Clean everything and solder the wires. Do the same for the other one. Adjust the iron leaves some more. Do not let them press too hard on the washers. Mark the corresponding iron leaves with the commutator rings and its wires. I used the motor casing and installed the lead cases so that I can easily solder wires onto the iron leaves. Do the same for the other leaf. Put the DC motor back and run those wires through the hole on the side. Press the DC motor on the bottom and lift it up from the case so that you can install the parts more easily. If you see those notches on the motor case, well, if you're having problems installing, you can cut them. They are not necessary for the device, but they provide more stability. Do the same for the other LED case, but this time be very careful because you need to lift the motor again. Work around until everything fits. Next, put some drops of gear grease on the copper washers. This reduces noise, heating and leaves your copper washers rust free. Spin the commutator a few times to spread the grease and to ensure better contact. Now check the connections on the side of the iron leaves and the commutator. Make sure the red and black wires are not short-circuited or connected improperly. Now prepare M2 8mm screws and lead caps and screw them all together. Next, connect the all red wires and all the black wires separately and solder them like so. 
Use shrinking cube to isolate everything together. And of course, use the lighter to shrink them. And this is it for now. You're practically 50% done. And don't forget, let me know in the comments which version you like me to build next, the Wi-Fi version or the RGB version. In the end, I will combine both, so I wanna hear your thoughts. Stay tuned for the upcoming video release. Bye!